Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me for Tea Time. I don't have mine right now, but hopefully you have your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee. So we're gonna jump right into this. I just found this fascinating. The FCC is providing a massive bump to Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink's DTC or direct to sell coverage. Massive bump of power, not a little bit, a lot of it. <laughs> so I want to get into this article and then break it down for you a little bit as I always do. Because I always say that this channel is not only just about the how, but it's about the why behind everything. Why is this more powerful? And how is it going to affect you and me over the course of the next couple of months as DTC rolls out to more and more people? So I'm going to jump into this article and then, of course, I'll give you my commentary. But more importantly, I want to hear from you down below. In the comment area, I want to know what you think. Is this something that you are looking for? Is DTC or direct to sell or supplemental coverage from space or whatever you want to call it? It's all the same thing. Direct to smartphones, sometimes people will call it. It's literally the exact same thing. I call it DTC, direct to sell, either which way, meaning that you can get coverage from a satellite above you on an unmodified phone, which is absolutely bizarre, but you can do it. Anyways, so I'm going to read to you this article, like I said, but then I want to hear from you what you think down there. Is this something, once again, are you interested in? Is this something that you think is going to be beneficial? We know it was a major bump during the hurricanes on the people that now see it as something that is really good for emergencies. So anyways, let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying SpaceX secured permission March 7th, just a couple of days ago, to provide direct to smartphone. They call it direct to smartphone. Same thing, once again, DTC or supplemental coverage from space or SCS, same exact thing. Bear that in mind direct to smartphone satellite service at high power levels to improve connectivity beyond the reach of cell towers across the United States. This is where it starts getting good. The U.S. Federal Communication Commission, or the FCC, said it will allow SpaceX to admit more power into the spectrum bands adjacent to its partner T-Mobile's frequency. More power outside of the bands that currently T-Mobile own bear that in mind, providing it doesn't interfere with other networks following concerns from rival telcos. Of course, rival telcos are going to be like, oh no, no extra power. <laughs> We're having enough, all right? We got enough to deal with, with just you having all those satellites up there that we don't. We don't need you to have more power. It's going to affect us. Sure it will. It's going to affect your bottom line is what it's going to affect. I always said that these other telcos are going to just absolutely just cringe with this. They're going to lose a ton of money and I'm happy to see it. Anyways, it continues. This conditional approval follows the FCC's November decision allowing SpaceX to use T-Mobile's cellular frequency on up to 7,500 Generation 2 SpaceX Starlink satellites for supplemental coverage from space or once again, SCS. What is SCS? It is DTC. It is DTS, whatever you want to call it. Same exact thing. So this is a little bit misleading, saying that they will allow them, and this is where it's very important to understand. They currently do not have 7,500 satellites that provide this service. But the FCC is granting them the ability to use this higher power on 7,500 satellites in the future. They currently have a lot less. At the time, meaning back in November, the FCC postponed a decision on whether to let these satellites operate at higher power levels, an upgrade paving the way for service to expand beyond SOS, emergency service basically, and texting to support real-time voice and video calls. So this is a big change from November. November, they're like, ah, I don't know. You know, that extra power might interfere with other people out there, other telcos. Well, as of today, or as of a couple of days ago, March 7th, they said, oh, you know what? It's okay. You got it. But how much do they got? And that is what is mission critical here. That is what is shocking. 
to me. And I'll get to that before the end of this video. Companies such as Verizon and AT&T, which have partnered with direct-to-smartphone startup AST Space Mobile, warned that increased emissions could degrade the performance of terrestrial mobile networks in the United States and create interference risks. Basically saying that if Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink's DTC service gets more power, Scotty, we need more power. If they get more power, then it might actually affect ground base. And that is absolutely not the case. But obviously, the FCC saw through that and said, no, that's absolutely false. Anyways, it continues. SpaceX pointed to technical studies showing that increased power levels remained within safe interference thresholds, arguing that relaxing power limits is essential for delivering reliable emergency communication and expanding mobile coverage to underserved areas. Very important. They put in that word emergency. Here's why. In its ruling, the FCC determined that SpaceX's proposed power levels were justified and unlikely to cause harmful interference. Quote, the commission determined that deployment of SCS will serve important public interest goals for the nation. Here it is. Expanding the reach of communication service, including emergency service to more remote places. Emergency. Remember that. Noting SpaceX said permission was, quote, crucial to its widespread development of SCS and emphasized the need to enable faster and more reliable voice communication in remote locations. The direct to smartphone service is currently in a free beta testing phase open to all U.S. carriers until July. After that, rival carriers and some T-Mobile plans will require a monthly fee to access. Of the more than 7,000 Starlink satellites currently in low Earth orbit, around 500 are equipped with a direct-to-cell payload. All right, so once again, emergency, emergency, emergency. And the reason being is because we all saw that during Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene that pushed through the Gulf and ended up going through North Carolina, but it hit South Florida too, which we were affected by those hurricanes. And since we were affected, we had access to the DTC service from SpaceX Starlink, and we can say it works. 100%. On a JC Live show, I tested it out, and we were able to text, literally from me to my wife, sitting here through eight and a half inch concrete walls and a roof from a satellite with no other service at all. So it works with two bars even. And sometimes I don't even get two bars from a local cell tower, which is about three miles away. I'll get one bar from AT&T. Here I was getting two bars from a satellite at 520, 530 kilometers in space. Absolutely crazy, right? So that is how they kind of push this through because everyone saw how great it was for emergency service. And they said, listen, it could be even greater if we had more power. Now, how much more power did they get? That is the question. And like I said, it was shocking. It's a lot, all right? So I wrote down some numbers. If you guys wanna do the math, you can. So originally started out with negative 120 dBW, which is decibel watts, divided by M2, divided by hertz, or megahertz, I should say. Now the new power is negative 110.6. So instead of 120, negative 120, it is now 110. 0.6 dB watts, once again, divided by M2, divided by megahertz, and you end up with an increase of 9.4 dB, or decibel. How much is that? It's a damn lot. It is a lot. So if you do the math and you end up with like, what is it? Two cubed would be eight. So you got like eight times plus the 0.4. So let's call it like 870. So 770% increase in power. 770% increase in power. That is a lot. That is a lot. That's not double, not triple, not quadruple. Almost eight times. You're, talk, you're talking about 770%. So what does that mean? Well, that means that they should be able to get 4G, 5G speeds from space. 
The question is, will you be able to use your unmodified phone for that? I think once you start getting to those extreme speeds, you're probably going to need a modified receiver, a modified phone. Don't quote me on that, but I just have a feeling. I have a feeling when you get to those really high speeds, you're going to need a modified phone. But I think that that's just going to simply come out. iPhone 86, whatever the hell it'll be at that point, they keep coming out with new ones, right? The, I, the latest and greatest iPhone at that point is going to have most likely a better receiver for that satellite frequency. I have a feeling. Once again, I could be wrong, but I think that that's what will end up happening. Now, the other thing is, is we see these competitors trying to go after SpaceX Starlink and saying, oh no, they can't have more power. You know, they're basically scared. They're running around like rabbits. They don't know what to do. One of the reasons is, is that SpaceX Starlink has been authorized to lower these satellites from like 520, 550 kilometers down to like 320, 330 kilometers. Whereas the rival companies, the satellite company that they're using, which is AST Space Mobile, are sitting at about 500 to 700 kilometers in space, still low Earth orbit, still LEO, but once again, about anywhere from about two to, let's say, three, 400 kilometers higher. What does that mean? That means that SpaceX Starlink is going to receive lower latency and they will be able to get a stronger signal on the ground. Now they've said, oh, listen, we have bigger antennas. We got bigger, bigger this, but it doesn't matter when you're farther away. You need bigger, <laughs> you know, just to break even. So this is a very, very big thing. And in my personal opinion, all of these telcos really need to start running like rabbits because they don't know what they're gonna do. They really don't know. They have a very minimal number of satellites on orbit, whereas Elon Musk's SpaceX Starlink has 500. 500 out of 7,000 satellites have what are known as E-node Bs built in. Now, an E-node B is I guess you can look at it as a modem, all right? Old school modem, where it transforms a regular satellite into a cell tower in orbit. Kind of cool stuff, right? So that's what they have. 500 of them have these E-node Bs built into them, which convert them into cell towers. And now we can use those cell towers in space to eventually make a phone call and eventually a video call. For right now, you can just text, but Right around the corner, I promise you, now that they have authorized, as of the 7th, what is that, two, three days ago, they have formally authorized 770% increase in power. Once again, more power, Scotty, we need more power, right? Like Star Trek, 770% more power. That is massive. And that amount of power is going to bleed out of the current T-Mobile spectrum. Doesn't have a choice, that's a lot of power. So this is really, really good times. And I think what's gonna end up happening is a lot of people that are currently using Verizon, they're using all the rest of the carriers, AT&T, which is garbage, which I use, they're gonna to move to T-Mobile, all right? I'm telling you, because for now it's going to be free. And what I do believe, and I still, I've said this for a long time, I think the top tier plan on T-Mobile, all right, their top tier plan will receive free DTC or direct to sell coverage from Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I, once again, I don't work for SpaceX, Starlink. I don't work for T-Mobile, but I'm just some guy reporting on this for the last 46 months or so that have created about 440 videos just for you about SpaceX, Starlink. Once again, there's a little button over here. I've told you this in every video. Click that button and you'll be able to see that playlist. A ton of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, how to create mesh networks, all kinds of stuff. And I tell you the how, and as I always say, I give you the why behind everything because this channel is always about the why. I like to dig in a little bit deeper. Even with this, I wanna get in there. This original article has this much information, I'll give you a little bit more. And I'll kind of put a bow on some of it and hopefully make it easier for you to understand the ramifications of it what to expect from it, that type of thing. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please throw it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Share it with your community, your friends, your colleagues, share it with everyone. That will help grow the channel. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch, my teas, my books, my shirts, my mugs, all kinds of stuff. 
Check it out. Once again, go to jchristina.com. If there's something there that you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, maybe through DTC. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.